Da. Well, good evening, laddies, lasses, and lassos. Welcome to the click. You smell absolutely astounding today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. I am so glad you are in time for a class today. What class click, you might ask? Oh, I'm so glad that you indeed did ask. You asked, didn't you? Yes, indeed, you did have cameras in your house. So anyway, today we have a class in a main character academy. Today you will learn how to be a proper main character. Have you ever wished that your life is a quirky movie? Oh my god, my life is literally a movie, you guys. <laughs> and I'm the main character. Today I will teach you how to fulfill that dream, or or maybe if you're a person who isn't a raging narcissist. <laughs> Wait, the camera is like, camera, you're not the main character. Why do you keep going down? Stop that. Is that actually better? Maybe it's worse. So today's video can be used for multiple purposes, right? You can use it either if you want your life to be a movie, or if you want to just figure out how to not act in public, which should be like the more hinged alternative of the two, I suppose. But before we get into it, let me show you the real main characters. We have Gay Mango. Oh my god, look at your rainbow tie, it's so cute. We also have Gay Demon with rainbow horns, my god. And also we have even gayer demon, which is like just a full-on rainbow. So these plushies will be available for Pride Month, and I do hope that you pick one up because you are wonderful, beautiful, and colorful, and you deserve all the joy of these little plushies in your life. Yes, indeed. Keep a lookout for them. Let's get on with this amazing piece of content, shall we? Enjoy. Mwah. You hand me that there thread there, boy. Oh look, it's a TikTok prank. Huh? You're the only one who can reach it, tall boy. Hand it to me now. Right there too. Henry, 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 hey, shut your mouth and let me battle him right now, boy. I said hand it to me now. Hey, is this supposed to be like some kind of plantation role play? Yeah. Is that what this is? Why you, what's with the boy? Why you keep saying boy, though? You, you, you understand what I'm saying, boy? You're avoiding him. That's what, you hear what he said, right? What, what's wrong, bro? You, what you mean, boy? Don't you touch him, boy. That's my, that's, he's proud of me. No, bro, it's a prank. Yeah, I could. It's a prank. It's a prank. It's a prank. It's, it's always like it's a prank. Oh my god, it's the consequences of my actions. It's just a prank. It's just a prank. Saying that something is just a prank, it's not like a get out of jail free card, you know? My mic up and Frick my mic up. Wait, you're playing the victim now? Oh my god, come on, dude. You can't just like do plantation roleplay and expect people not to get pissed about it. <laughs> This is so stupid. I mean, I've been married to my husband for 20 years, but uh, but we said no homo when we did like the wedding vows and stuff, so it's not actually gay. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a comparable thing, right? But that's sort of what it feels like when these people say like, the this is just a prank, bro, right? Let's harass people in public. Oh no, people are like, angry, angry, it's just a prank. It's fine, it's just a prank. As, as if that would make it less annoying. It's probably worse, because you're just clout chasing. God. This is what actually happens inside the $18,000 three-day alpha male boot camp that claims to make you a real man. Oh my god, let's look into it, shall we? I'm so intrigued. I want to learn how to become a real alpha male. Okay, let's check it out. You don't deserve to be here. F***ing quit. You piece of sh why are they standing with sledgehammers on a beach? I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better you f***ing whiny piece of sh**. But <laughs> what? None of you deserve to be here. Do you just sign up to this to be insulted while standing on a beach? You better move with a f***ing purpose. This is just like a weird outdoors like CrossFit lesson, but with a humiliation kink. Is that what this is? This reminds me of like one of those, I don't know, 1990s military movies from America or something. Oh my god, it keeps going? Both of you, you're gonna sit- Get over here, quitter, unquitter! <laughs> yeah, they have like the, the whole like uh, Hollywood sergeant roleplay going down. All of you, start crawling! Start crawling! Yeah. <laughs> they are gonna crawl and suffer until you're done with that cookie. Till the both of you are done sharing that- Oh, they're doing like the platoon punishment, you know, it's like this one dude messed up, so now I'm gonna punish the whole platoon. I'm not sure if that is allowed to this day though, in like actual military context. Like uh, corporal punishment or whatever it's called. I'm not sure if that actually uh, that's actually a thing anymore. Maybe it is in certain places, I don't know. And now they have some sort of wrestling thing. I mean, learning martial arts is fine. I've, I've studied martial arts for many years myself, not particularly recently, but... Uh, the beast, the is the inner critic the beast is the advocate the advocate supports you roots you on cheers for you but the critic your inner 
bitch. There's always doubting. Okay, this is gonna get copyright claims, so I'm gonna pause it. I do like myself some Disturbed, though. Good freaking music, but... Uh, <laughs> but I don't know, man. This, to me, sounds like really bad backwards advice you would tell someone who has problems with alcohol. Oh, you have inhibitors? That's like your inner birch, and you should just suppress that. Drink more whiskey, because that, that pushes down the birch, and you'll do more stupid outlandish shit. I don't know, fam. If you really want to get into it, there is definitely a balance between not being overly risk-taking and being silly and aggressive, because that will get you in trouble. That, that little voice in your head is there for an evolutionary reason. If you pick fights with everyone, eventually you're gonna lose, right? It's, it's not a particularly good idea for either you or the people around you. But you shouldn't be, you know, overly anxious either, because that would inhibit you from taking any sort of risk or putting yourself out there, whether it be for taking risks in work or, like, meeting new people or whatever it might be. Moderation is usually key for most things in life. And this feels like backwards advice you would tell like someone who has a drinking problem. This is wild. Whenever I go on a date in 2024, <laughs> I don't do 50-50. <laughs> you see, it's all about that sass when you're on first dates. She wants to pay fully, so honorable. That would be so funny if that is the bait, if that's actually what it means. I can totally see someone making a baity TikTok like this, being like, I never pay 50, 50, and then she just ends up paying for the date and the whole thing is super wholesome. That would be such a good video. That would be unironically a good video. Blasting not your Barbie girl in front of my ex's house. All right, we have to replace this with another sassy copyright-free track, but let's get into it, shall we? <laughs> Holy shite, this is wild. So she just decided to get... Are they drunk? They must be drunk, right? It's like in the middle of the day. This is like two in the afternoon. Wait, so is anyone even home or are they just like dancing in front of the ex's camera? <laughs> I'm not sure if this is gonna do what you thought it was gonna do. Do you think this is gonna make the ex more jealous? Look at me being drunk in the middle of the day, dancing around, singing Barbie Girl. I mean, that's probably something I would do back in my student days. But probably not at this age. <laughs> there is a context. Time and place. And then to get back at the next... <laughs> I don't know, man. This is really cringe. Oh, heck yeah, we got like a bodyguard and stuff coming out of the... Oh, dear God, what? Whoa. Oh no, this is like those oil injection kind of things. That, that's not good. That's not good. Haven't people died from this stuff? This makes me so uneasy to look at. This makes me so uneasy to look at. Oh my god, this gives me a very similar feeling to like when my needle phobia just goes bananas from like medical videos and stuff. But it's like less intense, but more like a general feeling of just... Please no. Damn! Damn bicep real, bro! No. No, they're not. No. It always looks so disproportionate, right? I don't understand why people do this, because it's so obvious from the rest of your body that this isn't something, you know, from a workout. This is just... This is just an injection or implant that is not even well adjusted for your for your bodily at autonomy. This is wild. <laughs> I think I've seen those ones as six packs as well. And it doesn't look better. Hello there. You have been permanently banned from participating in slash pics because your comment violates the community rules. Um... Why am I banned? What rule did my comment violate? <laughs> oh, guess. If you guess correctly, we will unban you. If you guess incorrectly, write anything that isn't a guess, you give us your consent to keep you forever banned and mute you immediately. <laughs> Man, this Reddit moderator is going on some kind of saw power trip or something. Well, I'm gonna play a game. You have to guess which guideline you broke. This is unironically how YouTube does it. Unironically. When you get a strike on YouTube, they don't even tell you which guideline anymore. It's insane. They're like, it violated it. And I'm like, okay, can you give me like at least a guideline or a timestamp so I can like edit it out? They're like, <laughs> no. Communication, man. It's a thing. And it's surprisingly uncommon for as much social media and we have in the world nowadays, but communication just... <laughs> Ah! Anyway, next post. <laughs> PLV, you tell people when they're in the frame. Okay. Do you know how I'm filming this way? Yeah. Do you mind being in the frame? Okay. Cool, yeah? Pardon? Oh no, you can stay! This is kind of wholesome though. Like, if you're gonna film in the gym, th this is kind of how you should do it. Like, non-confrontative, just asking if they're okay with it and stuff. Do I'm gonna ruin your video? Oh no, you're not gonna ruin it, it's okay. Excuse me, babe. I'm about to start filming this. But this is kind of wholesome. I kind of like this, right? Oh, I don't mind you being in a video. I'm just letting you. I was going to say, I'm filming. Oh, that's so wholesome. I love that. 
That, that's kind of nice. I like that, because one thing you realize, and it, with most people that you just meet on an everyday, right, out and about, is that most people are just quite nice and agreeable if you just, like, talk to them and you're friendly and stuff. So this, like, brings me some hope about humanity, you know? This is this is a proper, proper thing on this subreddit. A nice little wholesome break from all the <laughs> garbage gym videos we always see. Oh, wait, look at this. I see a garbage gym video coming up in my feed. Hold on, let's play this one together, shall we? Oh, heck yeah, look at this. Isn't this a beautiful- Oh my god! Yeah, this is a bit of contrast after the, uh, after the last one, isn't it? First off, I am so sorry. <laughs> I called it. Graphic content of this video. I didn't even want to post it, but something needs to be said, because mm -hmm. videos like this need to stop. This should never happen at the gym. And it blows my mind that this girl thought this was okay to do and film, then post on social media. <laughs> Do you not have any self-respect or dignity? No. And no. what makes it even worse, somebody from this gym reached out to me. This isn't just a gym. It's a health club called David Lloyd in Derby. No way. A health club that hosts a ton of events for little kids. That little kids are always all over the gym and the club. So I reached out to David Lloyd to let them know what was going on in their club and sent them this video. I really hope they kick your ass out. Because this is absolutely disgusting. You need to do better. Mind your own business. That is insane! They have events for kids? Oh my god! I mean, I thought this was a little bit, you know, unhinged off the, like, freaking COVID challenge kind of vibe. Let's spit on things and smear on things and lick toilet seats and stuff and see who dies first, you know? It brings me back that sort of vibe, but you're spitting on something else, you're doing it to the next person using it, which is even worse, arguably, because at least the first one can just be ruled out as, like, modern Darwinism. At least you're the only one who, who, gets, who gets injured from it, you know? But that is so bad! You're even filming it in a place where there are No! Oh my god! I wonder if humanity has always been like this, or if this behavior has, like, been born from social media and stuff. I think it's probably a bit of both, right? I think it's probably been there all the time, but social media enhances it. Because in the past, when you were to do stupid things like that, it's usually because a friend put you up to it, or it's a dare, or someone is just genuinely a nuisance, right? But now you have a completely new incentive. You have actual clout. You can, like, make a career out of being obnoxious and rage-baiting people to, like, your social media profiles where you treat gym machines as uh, as adult objects in a place where kids are attending. You know, it's absolutely insane. So I think that's probably it. It's just a new variable in the equation that is like a really big incentive for people to do this kind of stuff, which is insane. This guy dresses up in a costume at the gym to take attention away from his overweight friend who was embarrassed to go to the gym. This is wholesome main character. This is not even main character. This is just good character. Good friend syndrome. Good friend stamp. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. This is amazing. This is how we support our buddies getting in shape, baby. Hell yeah. All those people on Twitter are like, oh my god, you should bully people. That's how they get in shape. No, no, no. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. If, you, if you're genuinely there for someone, this is what it looks like. I can't work because I have social anxiety and have mobility issues dancing in a restaurant. I mean, to be fair, a lot of mobility issues means that you can, like, technically walk and stuff. It just starts hurting after a while. So it's really hard to, like, have work shifts and that kind of thing. But to be honest, unless this is part of your, like, exposure training that your therapist told you to do to tackle your social anxiety, and your therapist literally told you to film <laughs> TikTok dance videos in the middle of restaurants, <laughs> I don't know, man, it seems a little bit wild. But I think one important thing to point out with videos like this in general is that even though this video in question is quite cringe, and I don't think it spreads a good message, and it makes, like, a mockery out of it almost, it's also good to realize that it's not representative of how it actually works. I know a lot of people that have gotten in trouble, for example, because they use a handicap spot, but they're not technically in a wheelchair, they just have a lot of pain after just walking a short distance. So they can, if they push it, get in and out of a store, for example. But when people see them walking, it's like, oh my god, you're not really disabled. But not all disabilities are, for example, that visible. It means that you can't, for example, function a full day at an office walking around and that kind of stuff, but you can, like, maybe make it to the store out of your car. So I think it's very important to remember the nuances regarding these kind of subjects and not let, like, rage baity black and white TikToks uh, fuel your opinion about it too much. You can acknowledge something is cringe and doesn't represent like how things actually work in reality and, and move on with your day. I think that's the most healthy way to deal with this because my god. I'm sorry, but if a guy picks me up in certain cars for a date, I'm just not going. Okay. I'm sorry, but you can't tell me if someone pulls up in this. Hold on, put it on the screen. Hold on. This Prius. Okay. Uh-uh. 
no i'd rather not go on a date i'm sorry i know the type of person you are like i can tell by the car you drive what kind of person you're gonna be wait mm. i'll show you another and mm-hmm. this is for the boys too if y'all oh. drive these cars you need to reevaluate yourself because I see. anyways let me show you another car the only person that should drive this is my 90 year old grandpa okay that's the only person okay hold on one more i've got one more <laughs> all right yeah that looks pretty cute yeah okay well that's bad be i guess real. uh let's be for real but oh, like, yeah. why'd you get that why do you play with your hair so much? Jesus Christ. I'm gonna be honest, I think this is kind of like an unintentional ad for Prius cars. Like, I don't have a Prius or anything like that, but <laughs> I'm probably a little bit more likely to get a Prius now if it keeps people like her away from the dating pool, you know? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yes, walking after the train. That's a really cool street. Th- oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> That's the kind of feeling when you're on your phone and you walk into a streetlight or something like that. It's a really cool looking road though. I'm not sure about how how safe it is or anything like that, but it's pretty cool to have like a market street and a train in one. This feels like some kind of scene out of Fallout or something like that, right? It's really, it looks really cool. It's It's a particular aesthetic. Why is, like, the color correction so weird today? Camera, please! You can, you can pick a, a middle ground color. I am not orange, and I'm not, like, Snow White either. Please. Silly camera thinking it's the main character. I decided color correction today. Shush, camera. Shush, you're a silly bean. I seriously got banned because I was replying to a dude insulting me. <laughs> Lol, okay. Yes, if you wish to view yourself as a victim. <laughs> Another idea is to ignore trolls, as Reddit tells you to do. Other way, good luck on your sales journey. Or you can, like, ban the troll. Maybe that's usually what moderation is for. All right, anyway. That guy with 136 exchanges is a troll. Feel like that's an overreaction to what happened. No, you, uh, and we removed you. Okay, thanks, bye. Yeah, power-hungry kid can't justify his decisions. I just did, fat so good one, kid. <laughs> ah, Reddit moderators, isn't that a beautiful place that just breathes? Healthy interactions and healthy little power trips. Oh, yes, indeed. This chat is just a feeling of when a 14-year-old has their first taste of power and don't know what to do with it. Oh, my God. I moderate a forum page. Oh, my God. The world is my oyster. Why are you getting so upset, then, if your children are so wonderful? Because you're walking around here. Let them play. Oh, yeah, they're all the Everywhere I go, the shrieking kids are doing my best. Kids are noisy sometimes. I like how the kids are just laughing about it. Okay, this is the world we live in! Everybody yell! Wait, let me get this straight. So this is an adult, adult person that is like weirdly upset that they're walking past some kids in the park that are like noisy when they're playing. And then they feel like me as an adult should also be able to scream. That's a weird thing to get upset about. Like people that get unreasonably angry at kids for just being kids is really weird, man. Like, sure, kids can be annoying sometimes, don't get me wrong. Like, if I'm stuck next to a screaming kid on an airplane, it's like, yeah, that's annoying. But I wouldn't say it makes me genuinely angry, you know? It's not like you throw a fit about it. It's just a kid. Only shrieking because they were. (laughs) Wait, did you seriously? I'm only shrieking because the kids were. Me, a full-grown adult, I'm gonna mimic the kids. If a kid's misbehave, that means it's fine for me. Imagine what the world would be like if people actually followed that logic, dear God. I'm just trying to relax, and all I hear is shrieking kids. But it's a public space, though. Like, there's gonna be noise. Because your kids are royalty, and they can do whatever they want. Give them guns, why don't you let them kill people? Don't joke about that. Oh, that's not joke. What? That's where this went? Oh, your kids are making noise while playing in the park. Why don't you just give them guns? Damn, really went from uh, from zero to 100 on that one, didn't we? The most ironic part, I think, about videos and people like this is that they ironically cause more of a ruckus and noise and discomfort than the discomfort they were upset about to begin with, right? That's the, that's the ironic part, you know? It's way more upsetting and confrontative and weird to, like, confront, like, parents of small children in the park like this and scream at them for a minute straight than it is to just, like, oh, there's a kid in the distance in the park over there being noisy when they play, you know? It's, <laughs> it's so ironic, isn't it? East Village, 6 a.m. Speaking of your life being a movie, yes. Hello, New York! 
Are they being yelled at? Oh my god, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Shut the frick up! <laughs> Down. Spirit crushed. New York alleyways aren't the way they are in the movies. Oh my god. You know the funniest thing about New York alleyways in the movies? There's like one specific alleyway they use for like every single movie. If you watch like Spider-Man movies or anything like that, like every single alley scene in Hollywood is like the same alley. It's super funny. There's only one alley in New York that actually looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's that one. And they use it for every movie. But yeah, maybe don't scream at 6 a.m. You know, your life isn't uh, a movie, quite so literally. So, um, so yeah, behave, little, little silly people. Yeah. Oh, this can't be good. This can't be good. Yeah, Did you yell bomb in an airport? I guess they technically were like, bombastic something. Yeah, so it's like, oh my god, it's just a joke. We actually said something different afterwards. I am surprised they didn't get tackled by security. That would have been a more satisfying end to the video. Just being tackled to the floor. Honest, that would have been amazing. Just a nice little hockey tackle. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, don't do this. You can, you can be charged for this kind of stuff, and you can also get really tackled and put in, like, custody for this. So, like, don't do this. This is really stupid, and even if you don't get tackled, you know, it's still a really nasty thing to do. People have, like, legit anxieties and are scared about this kind of stuff. You know? This is... <laughs> this is so bad. I mean, not to mention just causing panic. It reminds me of those guys that were yelling fire in a crowded theater. I mean, people get stampeded and killed in those situations, right? Don't cause panics. My god, people. Beyonce reportedly argues her seven-year-old daughter is a cultural icon in a legal fight to trademark the name Blue Ivy. That is, that's a very general term to try to copyright. Beyonce has argued that her seven-year-old daughter, Blue Ivy, is a cultural icon in a trademark dispute with a small business owner. I could put this in r slash tragedy. I'm gonna name my child something quirky and then try to copyright it because she's a brand first and daughter second or something? That's a wild insinuation, man. The singer's attempts at trademarking her little girl's name was met with opposition from wedding planner Wendy Morales, whose business shares a name with Blue Ivy. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you're gonna copyright something, maybe you should be the first one to do it. It should probably be like an actual business or something like that, or a brand where the copyright has some sort of impact. I have never heard of anyone try to copyright a name before. Oh, actually I had. Actually I had. I had a copyright issue a bunch of years ago. And like, the opposing party went on some weird rant how they were trying to copyright their name. I didn't argue with them because I was like, there's no way I'm gonna spend more time with this person and go down this rabbit hole. So I just kind of like nodded and smiled and be like, yeah, whatever you say, pal. <laughs> so anyway, this reminded me of that very interesting story. Hey, can I ask you something by the way? No, it, it's just that every time I come here, like at the late night hour, I don't know why you're like very, like, it's not even me because I know it's not just me. Uh, like, I'm sure you're like this way with everyone. You just like are very impatient. Like if, if like, you don't want this job. You don't have to be here. Like I, I I'm, j I'm just letting you know. Like you are like, you literally rush my order every single time, and I hate having you. And I, I mean, I'm sure my word means nothing to you, but I'm just telling you, you <laughs> have the stare. choice to have a different profession. This isn't a profession. I'm sure you're just very incompetent, and you have to work here. Uh. <laughs> Hey there, fast food worker working in a drive-thru during midnight. I don't feel like I get a, like, enough luxury service about this, so let me explain your life to you and your situation. You have options, but not in an inspirational way. It's just like you're not good enough at this job, and you're not passionate enough with standing in a cashier in a midnight checkout with whiny customers. You can also just switch restaurants, you know? That's probably the easiest thing. If it really bothers you that much, <laughs> that whoever's working the night shift in a fast food restaurant isn't super enthusiastic, about it you can just you can just go somewhere else it's so easy you have a car you know this is some real main character syndrome isn't it <laughs> my god my fast food worker checking out my drive through at midnight has to be more enthusiastic about serving me <laughs> Or maybe you can just be a more likable customer and, you know, the likelihood of the server smiling back at you is also going to be increased. You know, filming them and <laughs> putting them on blast on TikTok. Probably not going to do that. Solid 9 in USA. Wait, is that a waste filter? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Let me, let me re- Can I play this, like, slower? Is there an option in this media player for playing- Yeah, speed. 
I'm pretty sure this is a waste filter. I see it like shrink back and forth a little here and there. That is wild. The world we live in, man. My god. Barely a 4.5 in any Slavic country. What, what on earth do you mean? You're just using filters for like silly Instagram videos. What are you talking about? This is like a 9 in the US, but it's just like a completely mid girl anywhere else in the world while completely using like an AI filter. So you have a body that is basically impossible to have. Oh my god, fam. If people didn't have enough body dysmorphia and sh** as it is, my god, nothing is real anymore. Social media is a lie. Let's live in the woods with the raccoons. At least they don't have f***ing waste filters. I'd rather eat trash. Uh, let's look at the next video, <laughs> shall we? The risk of sharing a dorm with strangers when traveling. No, they're filming TikToks in the middle of the... No. Oh my god, why? <laughs> they just look so dead. Um, diversity. You, so, I'm so sorry. Would you guys mind calling it a day soon? Just because it is half three. Yeah, sorry. It's half three. Yeah, cool. I don't and they're keeping the whole room up, just sorry. making TikToks. <laughs> She's now Belle, the boyfriend, to show the final product. I'm guessing Belle is a little bit of a wee British slang in it. Yeah, kind of, kind of like shagging a lad rotten. I'm learning so much British slang. I love this. I'm getting more cultured by the day. Oh, it's a little bit of a fast food freakout. I, I don't know what it is, but it seems like fast food places bring out the worst in people. I'm not sure if it's people with some kind of weird power trip thing, and they don't get, you know, a, a way to vent that frustration anywhere else in life, so they take it out on fast food workers and maybe their own kids. Oh! Oh, okay. So much catch. Okay, you can. <laughs> it's like a McDonald's or something, lady. You're <laughs> it's a, it's like a one dollar burger. <laughs> yeah, that's a diplomatic way of doing a slap it on. The oh my god. So I wanted to come out and publicly let everyone know. I threw it on the ground. Okay, let's let's look at the response from this from this nice lady, shall we? So I wanted to come out and publicly let everyone know that that was me in the video. After this video was published on TikTok, it went viral and news organizations wrote about me. It's pretty wild. And I honestly have no idea. I am simply baffled that this is possible. People found out where I work and they sent the video to my employer. That's pretty wild, though. That's pretty wild. I was then fired from my job. That's right, I was fired. Oh my god. Which I find to be extremely unfair, because all I was doing was going to get my weekly cheat meal, and it was the McDonald's employees that did not follow oh. the simple directions. Oh, I see, so it's still about me, 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 okay. So I felt that I had the right to come in I, uh, and let I. them know that my burger was not made correctly. I did nothing wrong. Literally, I did nothing wrong. Uh, so please leave me alone. This is extremely unfair of you guys to do this to me. Thank you. I don't know. I mean, looking up someone's workplace for, for you know, this kind of thing, it's like, ah, the internet is a bit scary in that way because you never know the full context either. I'm always a little bit careful with showing anything in videos for that reason. Sometimes things will look bad out of context or it's even satire or anything. Or maybe, you know, someone did something to them before that and, you know, so, so the person is actually reacting appropriately. In this case, I don't think it is because they're, like, weirdly doubling down on it and being like, it is an appropriate reaction, the McDonald's worker got it wrong, da da da, -da. Even though, like, you're slapping burgers on the counter, even if your order got messed up, that is not the way to go about it. So you're still being an absolute Karen about this. I don't think I would ever encourage anyone to, like, get people fired. The internet can be very scary, and like I said, you never know for sure if you have the full information. I think in this case, it just sounds like she's doubling down for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> this is a very stupid thing to do. Oh my god, my video of me acting like a butthole went viral. Let me- let me post another viral video where I just doubled down on being a butthole. <laughs> This is worse than YouTuber apologies, man. <laughs> it's another one of those, like, filming the reactions of people around you, because reaction content has gone to that extent now. It's not even, like, talking about things we're watching together or reviewing things or, like, having a take on a social trend or a topic or something. No, it's just like, look at this person glancing over to me walking down the street. <laughs> 
content, baby. Doing that in Egypt is a special level of stupid. Yup, Egypt can be seriously dangerous for women. My mom went to Cairo like 30 years ago and one of the male staff on the boat they were on going down the Nile told my mom and her friend not to go out without a male. He subsequently took them out whenever they needed to and told them it was extremely common for women, particularly tourists, to get kidnapped and essayed. My mom has always said she wanted to take me and my brother to Egypt as it's a beautiful place, but it's just too dangerous. That is wild. Okay, yeah, don't encourage to do this kind of stuff if you know it's areas that are, like, uh, not particularly safe, especially going around at night. Uh, that is that is wild. You know what the worst thing is about these sort of videos? It's not only that they're annoying or cringe or just filming people in public or something. Is I can definitely see this sort of videos just completely poisoning uh, the whole debate, for example, about essay. And, you know, all the people that always claim, like, Oh my god, watch what you're wearing and that kind of stuff. I can really see this video being used in bad form faith for those kind of arguments, you know, which really shouldn't be the case. It's just a cringe TikTok and it doesn't justify anything, you know, bad that happens outside of that. But I, I can definitely see things like this just going the completely wrong way. I've been on the internet long enough. I've seen what people used to argue their case and my God. I just bought my first plane. Commercial airlines are my not first plane. bigger seats. So I took the matter on my own hands. Here okay. I am inspecting my solution. My own airplane. So welcome aboard. I'm going to show you everything. This plane is perfect for big girls like me. I think the uh -huh. door is very wide so you can hop in. Is there like a sponsored link in the description? 10% off private jet if you you use code the click in the description. Now let's go to the back seats. I didn't know yet how to turn the AC on. But at least I tried every seat. This is exactly what I needed. The price was quite high. And yeah, it's a private jet. The rest of my life. But I know it's worth it. I'm in love with my new plane. Hard work pays off. Okay, like I'll I'll agree that planes are quite cramped, Joe. Like as a, as a six two gentleman, like yeah, planes can be really cramped. I've I've sat on planes a few times where it feels like my knees are, are touching my chin, you know. But I'm, <laughs> what is what is this? This this feels like it's what the solution is just buying a private jet. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if I've experienced this enough where I'm from, but I think there is a very distinct difference between like accommodations and stuff you, for example, have done knowingly that, that might make it more difficult for you to, for example, fit in a regular airplane seat, for example. I think there's a distinct difference and I think it's probably why this video is a bit like on the rage baity side of things, because it's obvious that this isn't like a question about, for example, accommodation regarding specific needs. This is someone that has very specifically changed their body knowingly and with surgeries and stuff, and then not being able to be accommodated because of it. It's a very conscious choice, which is why I feel this lands in a very odd category of, I don't even know what to call it. Rage bait? Or is this just what TikTok is nowadays? The right girl trying to get attention at a gay club. What a treat, lady. Let's dig into it, shall we? What? Will you stop doing that? It's not okay. No one matters but me. Ah. Anyway, cut. Anyways, we're start over. That's, uh, yeah, they're not even trying to hide that they're main character. <laughs> like, I am the main person at this party. Let me take over this film crew. <laughs> Bruh. I loving Natalie Harass at work. Okay, so they're filming this dude so looking. So a couple months ago, I was at work doing my job, you know, do, giving out excellent customer service per me, and, and this girl walks up, and she's t I tell me she's a speaker, but she, the way uh -huh. she's talking is very, like, it's different. She's being very inappropriate with me. She's talking like this, and it just makes mm. me uncomfortable, but I'm like, let me just try to do my job, you know, whatever. And then as I'm trying to help her with a speaker, I don't know if you're hearing the thing, but I was telling her we could look at reviews online. She bends down to point at something, and I see her bottom of her dress is cut, and I just see her entire f***ing ass. Keep in mind, side note, I am gay. I am gay. Wrong tree in the wrong neighborhood. This has got to be oh, one there of the worst <laughs> things I've seen on social media. That is this nuts. This woman goes to this man's work so she can bend over and intentionally reveal herself to him to get him to look, film it without his consent, then post it to advertise her uncensored OnlyFans content. The only reason this man knows this video exists is because somebody came into his work and recognized him as the pervert that wanted to oh my. On OnlyFans. No way. This man works three jobs to try and make ends meet, and you want to put that in jeopardy for what? So you can make more money on OnlyFans? Seriously? Oh my god. So pretty Yana, I don't know the terms of service for OnlyFans, but I have to believe that this violates their content policy. And I hope they kick your ass off. You need to do better. 
mind your own business. It's not even just TOS argument. I think this could go in a legal route. You know, this is basically some sort of slander campaign. You're trying to make a random person out to be a creep when in fact you were the one being the creep. You were the one hitting on them unsolicitly, cutting your clothes open and everything and filming them without their consent and trying to make it out to be something it isn't. This is just like a slander campaign disguised as some crappy ad. This is not even TOS territory. This is like this is like suing territory. This is really bad. I would probably take someone to court if they did this to me. That is absolutely nuts. Can you imagine that? You're just going about your day in a store and some ladies like weirdly touchy and flirty and harassy and basically flat you and then a couple of days later someone is like isn't you the creep on TikTok? what the heck that is so wild that is so wild i'm really happy the response is actually going viral and uh, i hope they're able to get some kind of justice for it either tos wise or legal because this is insane Th this kind of behavior can't be endorsed man oh my god went into walmart and of course there is no cashier available so i made them scan my groceries and self checkout and bag them <laughs> i am off today and i don't feel like working nor did I take training to work there you don't need training to use a self-checkout, I swear to God. If you're gonna sit there and watch me item by item, do it by your dumb self, boo. <laughs> the frick they paying you for to just watch me? You gonna work today, stink. Hashtag bring back cashiers, hashtag they hate me in the store. Yeah, there's something about people going on power trips with fast food people, kids, or like people just working in Walmart. <laughs> you're in a grocery store. Watch with this weird power trip stuff, I swear to God. <laughs> Whose fault? Okay, so we have some guy paddling or kayaking, I suppose, and a motorboat with some ladies in it. And they are not yielding, so he he falls over. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right away, this is very easy as someone who's been on the ocean quite a lot. It's their fault. If you have a motorized boat, it's typically recognized that you yield for other other people. I mean, you can you can you of course get out of the way if it's like a big boat or something like that, if you're going on a river. But generally speaking, if you have a small motorized vehicle, you are the one who yields. And he even tried to stop. He was braking and turning and stuff, and they just kept going. So they are definitely in the wrong here. They are complete buttholes and should not be allowed on this river. That is bonkers. At least he seems to be getting help there by the by the shoreline, but that is so bad. They're like, Look, they're completely oblivious. The bubbles, they're just completely oblivious. I'm in the bubbles. What? They didn't even look back. They're like, oh, I guess we just I guess we just hit and run this poor guy in a kayak. Eh, whatever, just slowly drift away. Yeah, having a little coffee on this boat. What a wonderful day. Yeah, no, they're definitely in the wrong. Yield for people that are paddling if you have a motorized boat. That is just common ocean courtesy. It was really bad because I was like, I felt so bad about it. Um, I called like child services mm -hmm. on this one. <laughs> uh. I, called, I called child services on my ex because he pissed me off. And then I was like, yeah, I'm done with this person, whatever. Like, you know, cheater, fucking piece of shit. Mm -hmm. lies about dumb shit he had kids i called child services mm -hmm. on his ass and i like fabricated everything and like said certain things uh-huh to the door and like there was a whole process are like, you admitting to I don't even make know if the children's aid worker still visits them but she probably does because oh my I god you're just said, admitting like, to a crime AI on camera shit? you know like real ai shit like fake bruises type shit <laughs> Be careful, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty crazy. The fact that this is presented as some kind of like quirky story is insane. Exaggeration story and then... on their ki on on his kids. Yeah. Like so, hit like yeah. Then they came, and they were like, "Oh, like we're seeing stuff that your kids are being abused. You know, you could lose your kids." And I was just like, "That sucks." <laughs> that sucks. Oh my god, that is insane. Why are like literal criminals coming on like these kind of shows and TikTok and just like casually talking about these stories like it's some kind of quirkiness? You know, when I talk about like quirky dating stories, you know, it's like silly misunderstanding, maybe like some catfish experience, you know, stuff like that. That's the kind of that's the kind of territory I see like, you know, quirky Tinder experience, that kind of stuff. Not like, oh yeah, I fabricated a child abuse situation to get back at my ex. Were they even dating at the time they made up the allegations? You know, it sounds like they want to claim the ex was a cheater, but but then at the same time, like, cheater, a liar, or whatever, which makes it sound like it wasn't really that crystal clear as well. And even if they were a cheater, this is not a response. If they are a cheater, you move on. 
It's not even your kids, you know, but you don't mess it up for the kids. Even if the dude was a cheater and like a liar or whatever like that, move on, date the next person. You're creating an issue for the kids. You're going to send them into like freaking foster care. If you keep going, you're literally using the kids as a weapon to get back at someone who probably didn't want to date you. That is insane. And like admitting to that crime on camera on some quote, quote a show, whatever this is, that is wild. That is absolutely insane. Oh my God, I hope the dude sees this. In the 1970s, archaeologists in Bulgaria unearthed a vast Copper Age necropolis from the 5th millennium BCE. Inside Burial 43, they found the remains of a high-status male with more gold than was found in the entire rest of the world in that period. Oh my god! Oh, and they say wealth inequality has gotten worse over the years. Look at this back in like 5th millennium BCE. One guy owned more than the entire world together. <laughs> has anyone made that argument yet? Anywhere? Oh my god, that would be hilarious. Did I call it? I hope that I called it. Oh, that's so good. All right, we got some fitness inspo here in like a, in like a busy street. Yeah, I got them gains. Hell yes. Okay, are we just gonna flex for people on the street? Looks a bit cold, doesn't it? Oh, we're gonna do like a routine. Okay. I mean, not gonna lie. Cool routine. Really good shape. But that is just the wrong, wrong place at the wrong time. No, are those kids coming? No, no, no. Look out, man. That, those are... No. No, 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 no. This is why time and a place is important. You almost knocked out a kid by, by doing this for a camera in public. <laughs> that is so bad. If you want to do this routine, just do it like in the evening when it's not crowded. I'm not sure if it's very safe to do this with construction stuff anyway, but you know, if you want to do it, at least only risk yourself. Come on. US government of America, you've made a big mistake. <laughs> you think you can take away our app? Well, we are the most powerful generation that there's... <laughs> That there ever was. Oh, yeah. Z. Hell yeah. <laughs> we oh. won't let TikTok fall. Yes. We will rise. Yeah. Rise above it. Rise fall. for TikTok. Hell yeah. I like the World War II, like D-Day. Uh, <laughs> little, little movie in the background as well. <laughs> Is there a voice changer as well? I think there's a voice changer. <laughs> this is satire. I'm calling this is this is such satire. It's so beautiful. He's almost cracking up like multiple times. And now you want more. <laughs> this is such bait and satire. Oh my god. Who's with me? I'm with the satire. Yeah, I'm with it. Oh my god, the moves. Hell yeah. Beautiful satire. Love to see it. I, I can't wait for this to go viral on alpha male TikTok. Be like, this is this is why America is gonna end it. <laughs> that is beautiful. That is beautiful. There is a little bit of hope in like proper trolling to this day. Hell yeah, baby. People saying they don't care. I am gay. This has basically become the new homophobia. What? People just try to dismiss you for being gay. I spend years planning my come out, and now whenever I mention I'm gay, no one cares. I mean, did you spend years on it because you like wanted to be safe, and you wanted to feel like the people around you supported you, and you were in a stable situation? For So for example, family doesn't disown you when you're dependent on them for housing and that kind of stuff? Or do you mean planning it like you're planning a gender reveal party? Because that's sort of what it sounds like. It's not even like they give me any credit or congratulate me for being brave enough to come out. Like, I've only made this my identity for the last 14 years of my life. At least give me a bit of notice. Fam, this is, this is, look, it's good that you've found who you are, right? And that is amazing, but this, this is probably not the direction, no? It would be like if you spend your whole life mastering basketball and I'm like, meh, you're okay. You're okay at being gay. <laughs> or you're amazing at being gay. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's really funny. That is really funny. That, that could fit on a pin. Like, okay at being gay. That's a really good pin. TLDR, people who act underwhelmed that I am gay are P.O.S. <laughs> Piece of poo? Okay, great. I think there is a difference between celebrating something like this in the sense of, for example, we can come out now because it means that the world is more accepting, we have people around us who are supporting and care, and you know, the, the classic homophobia is decreasing by the year. That kind of stuff is really positive and really good, and we have pride to celebrate this kind of stuff. It's a really positive thing, and we see a lot of this in this community as well. But this seems very much like me, 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 and to be honest, if we get to a point in the world where people just don't care, 
about sexualities in that way, that's probably where we want to end up. Like, I, I definitely see us in like 30 years ending up in the position where people just don't care. You know, you have gay characters in movies, for example, and no one cares it, because it's just like accepted that this is how the world looks and this is like everyday stuff, you know. You don't have the Twitter arguments anymore like, oh, having a gay person in the movies is woke or some, or some dumb <laughs> as, as if gay people did, don't exist in the world, you know, uh, that everything is a virtue signal or that everything, you know, it's just... I think the goal at the end of the day is that when people don't care about it, that's when it becomes accepted to the point that this is just everyday stuff. So in that way, I think that would be a positive, but it's probably a bunch of years into the future. Celebrating things is fine, but this sounds like you were expecting, like, congratulations for something, and you were planning it in the same way you would plan, like, a gender reveal party, you know? It's a bit, uh, it's a bit weird. And saying that people are pieces of shit for not being super excited about you being gay, that's weird. That is weird. Donald, uh, you have one of the landmark buildings down in the financial district, 40 Wall Street. Uh, did you have any damage or did you know what, what's happened down there? Well, it was an amazing phone call I made. 40 Wall Street actually was the second tallest building in downtown Manhattan. And, and it was actually before the World Trade Center was the tallest. And then when they built the World Trade Center, it became known as the second tallest. And now it's the tallest. I just had an amazing phone call during like the 9-11 strategy and uh, the main takeaway is that my house now ranks higher on the tallest house list in New York. That, wow. I suppose even Trumpy Wumpy sometimes still surprises, right? Like with the, <laughs> oh my god. You know the wildest thing about this? Even if you are like self-absorbed to the point that that is your main takeaway, like wow, this horrific thing happened, but at least my house is ranking higher in how tall it is now. Even if that's your takeaway, I am really surprised that they don't have the PR awareness to not, like, tell the public about it. That's the vilest part. Like, it's it's two layers of, like, lack of awareness. Just like, bam, bam, straight through. That is insane. But if I shadowbox it's a problem, I am that annoying person at the gym. What? What? But if I shadow box, it's a problem. What is this What is this video even arguing? It's just people being silly at the gym. No one is even paying attention to it. Everyone's just minding their business. Ah, gyms, man. Isn't it a beautiful environment? When the intrusive thoughts win. Oh, it's a stop button. Okay. Oh, oh, we punched it. Oh, quickly. Oh, run away or walk away slowly. Oh, run. Yes, book it. Oh, we are criminals now. We are wanted. When the intrusive thoughts win. I mean, oh, it's like TikTok to just pick up words that they think mean something and they just buzzword the hell out of them. But <laughs> this isn't intrusive thoughts. This is more like, oh my God, that big juicy red button looking like sweet clout to me, Courtney. She wants our high school yearbooks photo editor. Look at these, all these regular photos. And then you have this professional shoot yas with a bit of wind effect on the hair. Slay. School book editors are wild. In my school, only the first class students were allowed to be editors. So when the book comes out, only pictures of their friends and favorite teachers were present on event pictures. Oh my god, that's wild. You're basically like paying for someone else's like Facebook album. <laughs> My class did a graduation video collage, and surprise, surprise, the ones in the clique of the editor were the only ones present in the photo <laughs> events. It was actually getting boring and insulting since it made the rest feel left out, and the video was getting repetitive. <laughs> oh my god, it's only me and my six besties in this video. Screw the other 30 people in the class. <laughs> I would have figured if you wanted to take on the role of an editor for a class, like your first basic role is to make sure that at least everyone shows up at least once. You know, that, that's kind of like, yeah. But I do recognize this. I remember seeing something similar back in the day when I was in school. It was some kind of like yearbook for the school or something like that when people were graduating. And it was exactly the same kind of vibe. It's really, it's really kind of funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. I am the street sign now. Oh, oh, it changes colors even. Wow. This is this is certainly a way to do cosplay and not one that I enjoy. Ooh, we're in Paris as well. Look how classy that is. Oh, hey, grandkids. You want to see the pics and videos from when grandma was in Paris 40 years ago? Here you go. <laughs> or maybe they do even more embarrassing things, you know, our grandkids. So maybe it's going to be fine. Maybe this is going to be so low on the cringe scale that this is going to be equivalent to like those classy black and white photos, you know, you see of your grandparents when they were young nowadays. This is going to be our equivalent. We're going to have like an iPad on the stand showing TikToks. That's going to be our equivalent to black and white photos when we're grandparents. Yippee. Wait, she just power walking <laughs> through that cement? And all the workers are just looking at it. 
they're just so done with their day. Like, we just finished working on the cement. And she's like, I am not going around this building. I'm going to power through the cement. Back in my day. <laughs> Little bit of cement never... And they just get back to it. Oh, they just look so done. Lady, you could have just walked around the house, please. Oh my god. POV, you have a difficult crowd, right? Just charging into the water. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. That's pretty cool. No reaction. I'm gonna be honest, this to me just falls in that kind of category where I don't think you even need to do it for an audience. Sometimes people just do cool stuff or some tricks or like some backflip in the sand and just have a buddy filming it. I mean, the crowd doesn't really have to react, you know, you can just do a cool thing because it's cool. Hi, I love your top. Where did you get it from, XX? Ah, not to be rude or anything, but don't you think it's odd that you want to wear the same top as me? It's from a small shop, but they don't sell them anymore, so you can't copy me, sorry. Not to be rude, but let's be rude. Well, f***ing hell, sorry. <laughs> Isn't that a compliment? Isn't that a compliment usually? Hey, that shirt looks really good. Where did you get it? As in, you have nice taste in clothing. I, I want to use you as inspo. That's a compliment! What the hell? <laughs> POV, trying to take a cute photo of me picking up my birthday from the airport and someone's grandma killed my phone. Wait for it, laughing emoji. Oh my god, so quirky dancing. Oh, I can't wait to, to pick up my birthday in the airport. Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh run! Run for it! Do the quirky run! Okay, so she's gone. Oh, she hugs someone in the distance. Your phone is like 30 meters away. And doink. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, the absolute confidence to leave your phone in the ground and walk away from it with your back turned, I would never. I would never. Your phone is even unlocked because you're filming a TikTok, right? That is wild. That is someone who's never had anything snagged from them. I swear to God, this is... <laughs> I would never do this in a billion years, even if I wanted to film a TikTok. Holy crap. I mean, even the grandma is looking like, what the frick? Who left the phone filming on the floor? <laughs> People at the comments told me to get a real job, so I did. Oh no, it's the, the private airplane, okay. It's a very hard work. To my luck, I came with my favorite outfit. Some of my Jell-O's co-workers told me this was too heavy for me, okay. but I proved them wrong. There yeah, I, I prevailed. I got a real I job at a newspaper factory because people thought me butt influencing on an airplane wasn't enough. It's not a real job. So I went to a factory and filled myself on a Saturday when there's like no one working, lifting some papers, and now I had a real job. This is content, baby. Look at this coward behind me. This clown had the nerve to tap my shoulder and tell not to ask me to put your headphones on. I looked at his point extra and almost laughed before I told Cus to shut the frick up and finish his crossword puzzle. And he shut it right the frick up and finished the puzzle. Mother frickers, be comfortable. I am an old school n-word. I'll slap your butt just of slavery? For real though, Birch ain't even in first class. I don't think any of the people in the picture are in first class, I'm gonna be honest. This has 68,000 likes. 68,000 people are like, yeah, this random selfie, just like with a dude in the background, it told you like, hey bro, can you wear headphones on the train? <laughs> this is the reaction. 68,000 people were like, yeah, look at that nerd with his crossword puzzle, riding a train, it's not even in first class, who does he think he is? <laughs> really? This is where we're at? This is the stuff we pick fights over? Oh my god, man. Everyone that's using pub. Oh. What? What is... That was so... Oh, I had like a little audio clip, I think, saved here somewhere. Oh my god, scared the hell out of me. I, I heard my own voice from the skit in my last video. Holy sh... <laughs> that is amazing. Past click, such a main character invading my video. Oh yeah, anyway, I was reading this comment, speaking of myself being a main character. Everyone that's using public transit of any kind should put their headphones in. Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably a good idea. For over a half an hour, and it's past nine o'clock at night, I, I cannot help you. Okay, I'm just trying to explain to you, I cannot fix this for you, I can't help you. It's just, I can't do it in that amount of time. Okay. <laughs> what, but you haven't paid anything yet though, right? <laughs> Okay. Ma'am, that was incredibly rude. I don't know who you think. I'm trying very hard to remain <laughs> professional. Uh, I yeah, like can't understand vein, like... where you think you're coming from with that. I have other clients that book two or three months out for me. She's keeping her cool, though. there are only a few in there that I'm actually designing myself. I don't even know how you got my number. But this is... 
Nine in the evening. So she's gonna work a night shift, I guess, because you called them last minute. In the city that can help you, maybe I'm I'm not sure. I mean, Walmart can pull this off, but they're not. Did you? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Did you say bitch? I did. Okay. You know what? The only bitch is you because you've sat here and basically made fun of the fact that everybody else on the planet doesn't have any money but you. I don't know who the you think you are, but I'm the wrong mother. I'm the wrong mother. And it's past nine o'clock at night. I've got to do. Do you understand me? And it's not to make a cake for you. It's not to make a cake for you. Do you understand to lose this number? I just, I can't believe you would talk to me this way. Oh, go f yourself. <laughs> that was crazy. I can't She's believe crazy. you it, That is insane. And pulling the whole card, like the... I am the one paying you money, but 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 listen, lady, you're not actually a customer yet. You're you're in the process where you're discussing if this is going to be a transaction. You haven't paid anyone yet. No one owes you anything yet. <laughs> and if they say they can do it, then they say even Walmart can do it. Then go to Walmart. You presented your own solution to this problem you have made very much on your own. Do you go, I can't believe you talked to me in this way. Well, eat a cactus, okay? Eat a cactus. Oh, look at this picture. I'm charging my phone, but I unplugged like a machine to do so, which is probably going to ruin the food and stuff inside of it. My phone is the main character in this airport. Well, laddies, lasses, and lassos, I do hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed having you here, you wonderful, beautiful bean. Oh, yes, indeed. I hope you learned how to be the main character of your own movie life, yes, or learned how to not act in public. Uh, preferably the latter. So anyway, I will see you in the very near future. Take care. Mwah.